Uh, where to start? Um... So you love the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You've seen all the movies, but have you noticed how different the silver screen portrayals are from the comic book counterparts? I want to see everything. The transition from page to screen of characters such as Iron Man, Captain America, and Black Widow was a smooth one. However, some comic icons needed some adjustments before they made it to the silver screen. Hey folks, and welcome to The Binger. In this video, we're looking at 10 MCU characters who underwent some serious changes between the comics pages and the soundstage. The only people threatening the planet would be people. Who the hell are you? Nick Fury. At the end of the first Iron Man film, S.H.I.E.L.D. director Nick Fury informed Tony Stark that he was a part of a bigger universe. However, that version of Nick Fury, played by Samuel L. Jackson, has an interesting history in the comics. The Nick Fury from the primary Marvel Comics timeline, also known as Earth-616, made his first appearance in 1963. Fury headlined the World War II comics Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos, and would star in his solo comic Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. from 1968 to 2006. Fury would get his solo TV movie in 1998 with David Hasselhoff in the title role. So how did Jackson land the role of the swashbuckling spy? I'm not sure if you're real or if, if I'm having to clear. I am very real. In 2000, Marvel launched its Ultimate Universe line, aka Earth-1610. One of those books was The Ultimates, an updated take on The Avengers. In the Ultimate Universe, Nick Fury was a bald African-American who strongly resembled the Pulp Fiction star. What does Marcellus Wallace look like? What? When Jackson saw his image in the comics, he reportedly agreed not to sue Marvel. <laughs> He's black! Go on! He's bald! If they would cast him as Nick Fury in any future movie projects. And the rest is history. Wanda, welcome home. Wanda Maximoff, aka the Scarlet Witch, has had a crazy convoluted backstory, even for comics. She's been a magician, a mutant, and a genetic experiment. She was a soldier in Magneto's Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Then she was Magneto's daughter, until she wasn't. But one thing about the character that has remained fairly consistent is her costume. Some early versions of her outfit look like a red bathing suit with a sheer neck-to-toe red body stocking attached. Later editions include a red leather corset, and nearly every version includes a pointy headpiece. While some of these costumes could work in a cosplay setting, most wouldn't stand up to the rigors of battling supervillains. The MCU version of Scarlet Witch, played by Elizabeth Olsen, sports a much more practical look. In Avengers Age of Ultron, the only real scarlet aspect of the Scarlet Witch's costume is her leather jacket. Instead of the fiery red hair of her comics counterpart, the MCU's Wanda has light auburn hair. Thankfully, she also ditched the weird headpiece. What choice do we have? Wanda's twin brother Pietro shares many of the weirder aspects of his sister's origin story. While Wanda's powers involve chaos magic and probability disruptions, Pietro's are much more straightforward, super speed, hence the code name Quicksilver. Just like Wanda, he made his first appearance in X-Men Volume 1, Issue 4 in 1964. Just like his sister, Quicksilver also had a distinctive look. His white hair, complete with upswept forelocks, made him look much older than his twin. You know, I'm 12 minutes older than you. <laughs> Go. His baby blue costume with white lightning bolt accents may have taken some inspiration from a certain Scarlet speedster at Marvel's distinguished competition. And much like how Scarlet Witch's outfit was toned down for the films, Quicksilver's costume got a strong dose of reality. This version of Quicksilver, played by Aaron Taylor Johnson, sported a snug blue running outfit. The outfit included a subtle lightning bolt down each side rather than the giant one across the chest or the belt line. You didn't see that coming? Although his hair took on a lighter shade, it wasn't the stark white seen in the comics, nor did his do have those upturned curls that look like antenna. What are you doing here? Disappointing my kids. Clint Barton, aka Hawkeye, has been a member of Marvel's premier super team since The Avengers Volume 1, Issue 16 in 1965. 
He's also gone through a range of identities, including the supersized superhero Goliath and the masterless samurai assassin Ronin. Hawkeye has also gone through several costume changes, including one interesting choice in The Avengers Volume 1, Issue 98 in 1972. His new costume in this issue looked like a mini dress with a neckline that plunged past the navel, but his classic look involves a purple cowl with a painted mask and a huge letter H in the middle of his forehead. When the character hit the big screen, the costume designers knew that they had to sacrifice the colorful for the practical. The MCU version of the character played by Jeremy Renner donned a tactical vest with dark purple accents. Instead of blue tights and purple buccaneer boots, Renner's version wore tactical pants and combat-style boots. In Avengers Endgame, fans got a glimpse of the character in his Ronin guise as he traded in his bow and arrows for a Japanese katana blade.